discover the latest groundbreaking news from Elon Musk as he declares SpaceX's ambitious goal to launch 80% of Earth's payloads by 2023. That's transferring 10 tons of cryogenic fuel into space. This mission became an essential part of the next Starship flight, serving as a probe step towards in-orbit refueling. So, how detailed requirements has NASA laid out for the next Starship? Can SpaceX meet the new mission requirements? In this video, we delve into the exciting details of SpaceX's Starship and its potential to revolutionize space travel with a capacity that is X1000 times greater than current capabilities. Join us as we explore the future of space exploration and how SpaceX plans to shape it. Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of my channel. Join us now and stay informed with the latest news and entertainment. In the latest update, Elon Musk once more affirmed SpaceX is on track to launch over 80% of all Earth payloads into orbit this year. To achieve this, SpaceX is gearing up for an ambitious target of launching 100 times in 2023. Astonishingly, this 100 launch goal appears more within reach than one might think. Picture this, 100 launches. It sounds almost ludicrous, yet if that number diminishes while maintaining the same payload volume, it would be an even more astounding feat. Once this colossal entity becomes operational, it could catapult all this mass into orbit in merely three launches. Based on the Falcon launch plan for next year, SpaceX will deliver around 90% of all Earth payloads to orbit. Starship will take that to over 99% in future years. These magnitudes are madness to consider, but necessary to make consciousness multiplanetary, Elon Musk said before. The Starship stands as the largest rocket ever constructed. Every aspect of the Starship resonates with enormity. This rocket comprises two colossal components. The initial stage dubbed the Super Heavy Towers at 71 meters tall. Harnessing the power of 33 engines, compare that to the SLS's 6 and the Saturn V's 5, generating an astonishing 7.6 million kilograms of thrust. Slowly doubling the muscle of the SLS. Its upper stage, designed for cargo and crew, also named Starship, reaches a height of 50 meters, equipped with an additional six of those 33 powerful engines from the first stage. Together, this stainless steel behemoth, standing at an elegant and shimmering 40 stories tall, dominates the skyline. Starship boasts a liftoff mass of 11 million pounds, equivalent to about 5,000 metric tons. To put that into perspective, the International Space Station weighs in at just under a million pounds. Now, envision future iterations of Starship hoisting more than 150 tons into orbit. 60 tons more than SpaceX's Falcon Heavy, landing on celestial bodies like the Moon and Mars. This paradigm-shifting rocket has the potential to revolutionize Earth orbit and deep space missions by ferrying larger payloads on a single launch. Remarkably, unlike any other orbital launch system, Starship is designed to be fully reusable. Musk has suggested that this innovation could slash launch costs to around $2 million per launch. A breathtaking prospect indeed. If your launch vehicle eats up $60 million of that $350 million or more, already you're down to a pretty significant limit of resources for your actual mission. While Lead Optilati, director of the Cooperative Institute for Research and Environmental Sciences at the University of Colorado Boulder, says, if Starship can lower that launch cost, there's more that can be directed toward the science mission itself. Starship's overarching mission encompasses delivering payloads and retrieving others in orbit, adding to its primary objective of shuttling cargo and eventually crews to the Moon and Mars. According to a recent white paper co-authored by researchers linked with NASA and SpaceX, the current plan involves launching numerous unmanned Starship missions to Mars biennially, leveraging opportune planetary alignments for these journeys. The absence of crew presents significant potential to offload cargo on Mars and bring back samples from the planet. Similar prospects extend to transportation to and from Earth's moon. Its colossal size becomes an advantage in this context. Because Starship can return tens of tons of payload from the surface of the moon, the return sample mass of lunar samples from a single mission would dwarf the combined total return. Elon Musk aims to position Starship as a dominating force in the heavy launch market while nurturing aspirations to establish a colony on Mars. After the Starship's second flight, we're all probably anticipating something special for the next flight, likely to take place in early 2024. Well, not to disappoint you, we've got the latest announcement about one of Starship's most important missions. Specifically, in this IFT-3 flight, 
Starship has to perform a mission requested by NASA that is unlike any other they have ever done. In a recent NASA M presentation, Lekrisha Hawkins, Deputy Assistant Administrator of NASA, shared interesting news indicating that SpaceX is planning to test the propellant transfer as part of their third Starship test. SpaceX has work to do just in terms of maturing their capability, she said. There is also work to be done in cryo management, such as refueling and managing boil off of propellants. The slides accompanying her presentation stated that SpaceX will include propellant transfer demonstration on the third Starship flight test, which the company is moving quickly towards. She did not discuss that work, but that's believed to refer to the transfer of propellants from one tank to another within the Starship vehicle, not from one Starship to another. If you recall back in 2020, NASA awarded SpaceX a contract called Tipping Point worth $53 million. As part of that contract, NASA wanted SpaceX to develop and test the cryogenic fluid management CFM technology, a technology deemed essential for future missions to the Moon and Mars. Lockheed Martin and United Launch Alliance also received similar contracts with different amounts. The Starship engines are powered by a combination of two propellants, liquid oxygen and liquid methane kept at cryogenic temperatures. Approaching orbit around Earth requires using a significant amount of propellant loaded onto the rocket, meaning SpaceX needs to replenish the Starship with more cryogenic propellant to transport cargo to other planets. This involves launching the Starship tanker to supply more propellant into orbit and transferring that fuel into the main Starship rocket. The process is similar to Madeira refueling, a method commonly used by the military to extend the operational range of jet aircraft. According to NASA's contract, SpaceX's first demo will involve transferring 10 tons of liquid oxygen between containers within the Starship rocket. When SpaceX tries transferring 10 metric tons of propellant from tank to tank inside Starship, it'll be at a scale never before attempted in space. But it's a small fraction of the amount of fuel and oxidizer needed to fill a Starship spacecraft in orbit. After the tank-to-tank -tank demonstration, SpaceX will attempt to ship the ship-to-ship -ship propellant transfer between two Starships linked together in Earth orbit. That's really when we start maturing the systems and when it gets exciting for HLS, because those are the building blocks that we need to, and frankly, it's never been done successfully in orbit, said Lisa Watson Morgan, NASA's HLS program manager in an interview with ours last month. So, even though Starship won't encounter another tank of rocket for this demo, NASA is still evaluating the testing process as SpaceX refines the technology. The goal is to advance cryogenic fluid transfer and fill level gauging technology through technology risk assessment, design, and prototype testing into an orbit demonstration. The demonstration will decrease key risks for large-scale propellant transfer in the lead-up to future human spaceflight missions, NASA says. This might be the plan for conducting this test as part of IFT-3, and if IFT-3 is unsuccessful or doesn't demonstrate successful LOX transfer, they may attempt this propellant transfer demo on each subsequent flight until it works. However, regardless, we still hope that the propellant transfer demonstration expected to take place next year will be successful, marking a significant milestone in the system development. NASA and SpaceX are reviewing options for the demonstration to take place during integrated flight tests to Starship in the Super Heavy rocket. However, no final decisions on timing have been made, NASA spokesperson Jimmy Russell said in a statement. This is a successful attempt that would push Starship beyond its benchmarks reached thus far. Insights gained from the planned propellant transfer demonstration will address lingering questions about the Starship lander, particularly regarding the number of tanker launches needed for Artemis landing mission. The Artemis III lunar landing heavily relies on SpaceX's Starship. As per the mission plan, a depot Starship will launch into low Earth orbit initially, where it will be refueled by multiple Starship tankers' spacecraft. Once the depot accumulates sufficient fuel, the lunar starship will launch and dock with the depot for fuel transfer. After the lunar ship's tank is filled, it will move into a near rectilinear halo orbit around the moon. There, it will rendezvous with a crewed Orion spacecraft that will be launched from Earth by NASA's Space Launch System rocket. A crew of two astronauts will transfer from Orion to the lunar lander, which will then descend to the lunar surface for a stay of approximately seven days. When their surface expedition is complete, the astronauts will lift off the surface of the moon and head back to Orion, orbiting the moon. After docking, the crew will spend up to five days in orbit, transferring samples between the vehicles and preparing for the return trip. Orion will finally undock from the starship and bring the astronauts back to Earth. 
According to NASA, the Lunar Lander's critical design review cannot begin until the propellant transfer demonstration is completed. On December 4, Lakeisha Hawkins, Deputy Associate Administrator for NASA's Moon to Mars Program Office, discussed the Artemis schedule with a committee from the National Academies. One of her slides noted that SpaceX is moving quickly toward the third Starship launch, and that this flight will include a propellant transfer demonstration. As per an FCC filing, Starship's third integrated flight profile will be mostly similar to the first two flight plans. The integrated vehicle will lift off from Starbase, and after stage separation, the booster will return to Earth and land in the Gulf of Mexico. Meanwhile, Starship, after attaining an altitude of 235 kilometers, will perform a powered, targeted landing in the Indian Ocean. SpaceX's propellant transfer demonstration, funded by a $53.2 million NASA contract, requires moving 10 metric tons of liquid oxygen between tanks inside the Starship rocket. Even though not explicitly mentioned on the NASA website, it appears that liquid oxygen will be transferred between the main tank and the header tank, while the Starship is coasting in orbit. Header tank store propellant required for landing maneuvers. SpaceX needs to make the necessary modifications to the Starship design to allow propellant transferred between the tanks. They need to install additional pipes and valves to connect the oxygen header tank downcomer to the main tank for propellant transfer. However, a NASA spokesperson has shared with the media that the tank-to-tank -tank test is only a possibility and could be pushed to a later flight. After the tank-to-tank -tank demonstration, SpaceX will attempt to ship-to-ship -ship propellant transfer between two starships connected in low Earth orbit. These demonstration missions will give NASA and SpaceX enough data to improve propellant transfer technology and decrease the risks during Artemis missions. As per current developments, it looks like Starship 28 and Super Heavy Booster 10 will be launched next. Starship 28, with all its engines installed, is inside the high bay and is getting ready for static fire tests. Equipment for lifting the Starship onto the suborbital launch pad arrived at the launch site early Tuesday morning. It won't be long before Ship 28 is brought out to the launch site and placed on the test stand for static firing. Road closures for Starship testing have been posted on the Cameron County website, most likely for Ship 28 static fire tests. The ship is likely to be transported to the launch site by Friday evening and static fire tests may begin as early as Monday. Booster 10, inside the Mega Bay, received its hot stage ring last Monday morning. The ring design is similar to the one that flew atop Booster 9 during the November launch. On Tuesday morning, we saw a new and upgraded booster transport stand heading into the Mega Bay. This stand has been under construction along with another one at the production site for the past few months. At first, it was believed that the rings, which included 20 booster hold-down clamps, were many versions of the orbital launch mount, and they would eventually be converted into test stands for booster static fires. Later, it was revealed that they were actually new and improved booster transport stands. After the transport stand arrived inside the Mega Bay, Booster 10 was lifted from its engine installation stand and placed on it. The booster then left the Mega Bay and moved into the Rocket Garden. Once the repairs are complete and the orbital launch mount is ready, Booster 10 will be moved to the launch site for static fire testing. And that's about it for today's episode. Thank you so much for tuning in. And that's all for today's update. If you enjoyed watching and found it useful, please make sure to subscribe to my channel and hit the like button. And if you want to support our channel and if you want to be up to date, you can become an exclusive member. So click on our perks through the link in the description below. Thanks to watching and see you next time. By the way, are you familiar Talk Talk Philippines app? Talk Talk is a delivery service app designed to connect more people by delivering items door to door. For more information, download the TalkTalk Talk app, here down below.